Ismail of Unseen. Uh, today we have artist Sam Heath with us, although he's actually not with us today. Um, we pre-recorded his interview uh, on Monday, so we'll be listening to that together um, because he, he works as a technician during the week, so can't get time off at lunchtime. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar with Unseen, um, this is a project that's been running or is running for 10 weeks where we have 10 artists and it's looking at um, the difference between audio and visual and how we communicate between those two medium and how that has happened throughout uh, lockdown, how we've been experiencing artwork, mainly through the screen um, or, or audio format. And um, so we have 10 artists and the first artist was given an audio that Saul created um, and uh, that was Sharon and she created a, a visual piece from that and then that then she also created an audio describing her visual piece and that was passed on to the next artist so the next artist actually never visually saw the work and then so on and so forth for 10 artists um so yeah as I said this is our eighth eighth artist and we're slowly nearing the end and at the end of the project we will have a post view um where all all of the artist audios are going to be um, heard in, in order um, so you can kind of hear how the progression has worked. Um, so today we'll work, um, I'm going to play a little bit of the, the video interview we did with Sam um, where he's explaining who he is and his practice. Then I'll stop it and we will look at his work um, and I'll just put that up on the screen so we can, we can look at that for a bit. Then we'll go back and listen to the rest of the interview and then at the end, um, we'll just have a discussion about um, what we heard, uh, what we thought. Um, and then right at the end, I'll play the audio um, that Sam received. Um, so I hope that's okay. Um, so I will start off by playing a little bit about Sam. Um, so hello. Um, today, well, it's actually Monday we're recording this, but today um, is Wednesday and in our lunchtime chats, we have Sam Heath. Um, and I wondered, Sam, if you could introduce yourself a bit, tell us a bit about yourself, about your work um, and your, your practice. Yeah, sure. So, uh, yeah, I'm a painter and printmaker, drawer. I don't know what the word for that is, but um, yeah, my work is kind of rooted in figuration and the everyday and I yeah generally my kind of my subjects sort of dictated by uh, my, my current situation so often that's sort of friends and family um, like kind of places close to where I live um, the largest body of work I did recently was all about uh, my local pub and so yeah I'm just really interested in kind of drawing attention to these so sort of seemingly ordinary things yeah mm -hmm. I'll go with that <laughs> great so hopefully you heard that and um, that's Sam and um, I'm gonna now show Sam's work um, and I'll leave it up on the screen for about 20 seconds 30 seconds so we can have a good chunk of time to, to have a look Um, and now I'll play the, the rest of the interview. It's about 15 minutes. Um, was the first bit stilted or was it okay? Can people hear okay? It was all right, great. Perfect. Um, and so you have done a, a painting for us for, for this um, project. 
Can you tell us a bit about um, the piece and um, yeah, wh why you chose to do what you did? What you have done? Yeah, so it's actually, uh, it's, it's kind of a painted collage. Um, it's all cut up paper. Um, I, as I say, I normally work kind of from observation or from real life things or events. Um, sometimes from kind of in part from memory but almost never from sort of imagination and that's what this project sort of mm. asked us to do so that was quite daunting um, and I was expecting or perhaps hoping um, for almost a description um, but instead it was kind of the audio audio was, where I, I kind of received was sort of little clues um, themes I suppose that kind of I had to try and yeah piece together to create think about what I was making so I ended up making um yeah I mean I presume they can see it so it's a uh, it's five naked me's dancing around <laughs> outside um obviously clearly a sort of pastiche of Matisse the dance um paintings um yeah that's a kind of direct response to you know description of it I don't know what else you want to know from yeah I guess, how did you get to that point? So you, you didn't have anything described, it was more theme. Why did you decide to, to paint or collage uh, that, that scene from the motif? Um, so I think, I kind of bizarrely actually, you know, having seen um, Francesca's video, it's, it's kind of, I'm really pleased with the sort of link between them. Um, and I kind of, she, in her, in the audio recording was given, she was talking about, she sort of said stuff to do with dance. So obviously that was where my mind initially went. Um, and she was talking about um, being outside, which again, another, another kind of strong theme of that painting, paintings. And I think she said, she talked about digital collage and I presumed that, I, I kind of imagined that she was, she probably would have made a, um, a recording of herself, whether that be kind of a photograph, some sort of composite, um, yeah, photograph, photograph at work, or or turned out to be a video. And so, yeah, I, I kind of actually, obviously, I didn't, I didn't, I couldn't imagine exactly. It was you know, really beautiful, sensitive video, but I sort of that is kind of what I thought was being described to me, even though it was quite abstract. What I was being kind of having to respond to um so yeah and whilst I suppose a bit on the nose you know going straight to Matisse the dance um one of my favorite or probably my favorite kind of contemporary painter Chantal Joffe she um when she was exploring um the nude and the self she made this photographic collage um as Picasso's Les Demoiselles d'Avignon, um, and it's really, really kind of funny and awkward and weird. Um, and yeah, basically, as soon as I kind of got the idea in my head, it just made me laugh and I had to make it. <laughs> yeah, because you'd said in one of your emails that you it makes you laugh every time you see it. Is that, because I know not all your work has elements of humour in, but is that something that you, you sometimes have in your work or is that new for this project? I think although my work is yeah it's quite straightforward I try to avoid where I can um I don't arty bollocks basically and so I kind of as soon as as soon as I kind of start veering into that world my my kind of gut reaction is to um, yeah, react the opposite way, but whether that's just with kind of, as I say, sort of straightforwardness and, and kind of quite grounded works, or yeah, perhaps in this reaction, I just ended up going a bit silly, but I, I it's not entirely, you know, the, the thing is it, is, it is funny and it is playful, but it's, um, I, I, yeah, I think it's quite good. <laughs> I do, I think, um, when I saw it first, I, I did immediately think of Matisse the dance and when I, I had to have a Google because I hadn't seen it for ages mm. and the colours you use are quite similar as well. Mm. Um, 
So I wondered if you specifically used that colour palette or because you wanted it to... Yeah, I, I think I just, I think it was a complete kind of, um, yeah, as I say, sort of pastiche of it. And um, mm. yeah, I just kind of, yeah, because I was collaging, I painted just loads of paper, just in four colours and left myself with this really, you know, his paintings. Um, I mean, I I am obsessed with Matisse and um, as all good artists should be, but I think that that sort of simplification is something I'm sort of striving for in my work, certainly over the last few years, is to kind of, yes, yeah, simplify it down. And But the collage thing is new. I, I've, I've kind of collaged prints and drawings um, in the last few years. That's become quite a, a mainstay of my work, sort of allowing me not to be too precious with it all. But it's, this is probably the first straight collage that I've made. And hopefully, yeah, hopefully that might be a new kind of element of work going forward. So that's, that would be fun to have, to be able to do a project that's been just kind of drawing out um, a chance to experiment and play and, and kind of, as I say, the whole thing was a bit outside my normal kind of comfort zone. So it was, it was just a chance to, you know, have a, have a go, I suppose. <laughs> mm. And, um... Quite often uh, people at the lunchtime ask questions about like process and materials so mm -hmm. could you talk us through um the i guess the paper materials you used for the collage and, and how you went about making it yeah so um so yeah basically i i, I didn't want to overthink it so as soon as, as soon as i kind of had the idea i was like that's what i'm gonna do um i have to get becky my partner to <laughs> photograph me prancing around the flat which I had a great time. It was very fun. I'm not sure she had as much fun. But <laughs> um, and then, yeah, it was a case of just, yeah, I painted um, quite large sheets of um, Fabriano with just watered down acrylic paint, mm -hmm. sort of very simple colours, and then chopped it up and stuck it down with Pritt stick. I've got it. I'll go grab it. I'll go grab it. Yeah. So it's not, it's not tiny, it's oh, quite wow. big. That's so good. <laughs> so yeah. Are you gonna, are you gonna put it up? No, I mean, not in the flat, that would be. <laughs> <laughs> I, also, I also think I kind of, I feel like I need to um, make the point here that when we were, when we were kind of encouraged to, to make a to submit a sort of promotional artwork. I also submitted a self-portrait mm. because that was quite sort of, I suppose, representative of me and my practice. However, I do want to make the point that I am not kind of totally self-obsessed and that actually the vast majority of my work is not pictures of me and, and never has been five naked me prancing around before. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess you said it's people at your local club and friends and family. So. Yeah. And I know that from looking at your Instagrams. <laughs> Um, and how did you find the process itself of, because um, it's quite a quick turnaround and a lot of the artists who've been previously have said it's been very tight and constrained. How did you find that um, speed and also just the, uh, the process of working from an audio to make a visual? Yeah, I mean, as I said, I think I was initially very daunted by the idea. I think, I think that the the thought of what was coming up and what I knew was on the on the kind of on the calendar and that, that I had this time turn around was yeah I, I, I was daunted by it. I did not know how I was gonna what I was gonna get obviously and I didn't um, I didn't know what I was gonna do um, and so I think I decided quite quickly almost you know I knew the email was in my inbox, I haven't listened to it. I said, right, I'm just gonna, I don't wanna overthink it. I think that's the main thing is that if I overthink this, I'll, if I try and do too many possible ideas and things, that's not enough time for that. So it was a case of, yeah, there was my first idea was this, this kind of Matisse thing as soon as I heard it and I just kind of, yeah. I, I smashed it out in a day and it was great. And it was just, yeah, I think, I think that was, that was the, 
and there was something quite freeing about that. Obviously, yeah, as I say, if I had done that as a painting, I would have, I wouldn't have had time. It was the whole thing. I thought like, I don't have time to do anything um, kind of sustained. So let's do a quick kind of playful material that I can. Um, and I just kind of yeah worked on it for almost the whole day and mm. yeah. How how long do your paintings usually take? Um, like can. It's it's hard to say recently because I think because I don't I know I, I I work from I'm, I'm a kind of mixture of drawings photos mainly for color reference um, and things but my kind of, my style is evolving oh, style but my my kind of process is evolving to leaving things to dry and kind of then painting over the, over the top again and again so it's getting they're getting quite thick and crusty at the moment um, and they're taking or well, they can take weeks, um, which has been fun. Not, I think I probably only work on them in kind of quite short bursts, but then I leave them. So, and the kind of the biggest painting that I've been working on a while is, um, yeah, kind of of my mum and dad. And I started it before the second lockdown. And then I kind of, between then and Christmas, was sort of trying to wrestle with it. And then I was just giving up on it. And then now that, we can see each other again. I'm kind of now like trying to get back into it. So that one's probably the longest painting I've ever worked on, even though actually it's probably yeah, quite quick, short hours at a time, not days at a time. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that build up of layers does take a while. Mm. Do you usually use oil or acrylic? Yeah. Oil. Yeah. Oil. yeah. Mm. Um, and I guess, my last question would be, um, how have you found, this is more of a general question, how have you found lockdown, be, being an artist and making, um, how have you found that whole experience? Yeah. And uh, of, of not being able to go to galleries and shows and see work physically? Uh, yeah, horrible, <laughs> basically. I, um, I think I, the, the first lockdown was, I know that's slightly perverse, but was 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 great um, for me. I was lucky enough to be able to, I still had an income and I was, and I could just kind of, but was working from home and I did suddenly get all this time to make new work and I was painting new subjects, I was painting my house plants. I was, um, you know, very ordinary things still. Um, and I was selling work through the art support pledge in the first one, and it felt quite exciting. It felt it felt good. Um, and then that was going okay. Kind of things were ticking along. A um, couple of good shows in that nice little good bit when set, not exhibiting, going to see them, and that was kind of what I had needed. And then, and then yeah, then it's sort of between October and. I, th I feel like it's only now that I'm starting to get back into the swing of things. It's taken that long. Um, starting to see a few new exhibitions. Um, but I, I think that, yeah, January, February particularly, I mean, I, I know it's the same for a lot of people, but was was really tough and I, and I couldn't, I just felt, I mean, unmotivated, you know, unmotivated to do anything, let alone make art. Um, and so, yeah, it's been tough. But hopefully, you know, I, I, the shows I was, I've been had planned for a little while have been managed to be delayed. I'm lucky enough that's happened. Um, hopefully, I'll get up to London in the next few weeks to see some of the shows that I've been missing. Um, yes, it's feeling cautiously optimistic, you know, for the first time in a while. But yeah, no, it, it has been. I, I didn't. I don't think I realised how sort of stagnating it is to, to not be able to chat to other people, other artists, see other, see exhibitions, all of that stuff. So yeah, this has been, this has been fun. This has been a nice kind of um, re-entry into that world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, so just to finish us off, are there any questions or themes or things you would specifically like um, the Zoom room to talk about? or discuss, seeing as we can't ask you questions? <laughs> um, 
No, I don't, I don't know. I'd, I'd be really interested. I'll watch it back once you do the, once, it, once you, you know, to see people's comments. Um, I hope, you know, as I say, I hope, I hope people find it funny. It is funny. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I kind of, as I say, this is the first time I've kind of made an, an imaginary, I suppose, self-portrait, everything. I, so it's, it's a bit of a, a bit of a leap of faith, really. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what, what gets discussed. I thought one, one thing that I, you know, I, um, sort of final comment I suppose to make is like, so I called it, um, this is perhaps a little bit pretentious, but I called it Dancing On My Own, which is um, a, a pop song by Robin. <laughs> Great song. And um, actually there was something kind of, that made me kind of think of, again, back in probably the first lockdown, we do, we're doing lots of sort of silly, um, Kind of zoom discos and things like that with our friends that was not we only did a couple but they were they were great fun and um yeah we played that song every time and so there's something kind of slightly kind of liberating perhaps this idea of kind of what i actually want to do now that you know now that we've been confined for so long <laughs> so there's something i don't know something about that maybe <laughs> yeah. oh great well thank you so much for um for chatting with us today no thanks you thanks for having me <laughs> All right, then. Did everyone follow that OK? Yeah, great. And um, for those who joined later, um, Sam it can't be here today. Um, so we recorded an interview with him earlier in the week. Um, and now what, I guess we'll just spend some time discussing his work and, and anything you, um, any thoughts you had from, from the interview. Um, anyone feel free to chip in. Was it just the painting? Because I'm sorry, I came in really late today. Was it just the painting? That, was that the, the thing? Yeah, it was a collage. So he painted on paper and then collaged it together. Yeah. Yeah, I, I got the two as Matisse, but I, sorry, I was really late today. Mm -hmm. What was his thinking about, about doing a self-portrait? Because he, he was available. Well, I don't understand the question. Oh, sorry. Um, I, I missed some of his spiel. So why did he decide to do a, sort of himself in, in that sort of setting? I mean, I see the Matisse, obviously linked with Matisse, but why did he choose to go that direction, did he say? Um, I guess... Uh, I guess he said at the end he doesn't usually use himself in um, in his in his pieces, um, but I don't think he specifically said why he chose to use himself. Okay, mm -hmm. I just wondered if I'd missed some important bit of information. <laughs> I, I had a giggle when I when, saw when the image after the because I've seen the video um, of the dance. And I just thought that's hilarious. I mean, I'm really interested in listening to her her audio to see how you know if it was really obvious that that it was all about dance. But I think art with humor is wonderful. I really like it. Um, and again, the format seemed bigger than what I imagined. So it's nice, actually. I, I prefer it to be a bigger piece. Um, and I like the fact that he actually cut out his shape um, because even though it's copying Matisse's, when you when you do the cutouts, it almost also reminds me of you know of that you cut one and you open it and you have several. Mm. So it has that kind of fun childlike um, feeling about it not pretentious, but at the same time, you know, making reference, artistic reference. I, I really, really liked it. What are other people's thoughts on the humor side of things? That um, my first impression was, was the, um, the, the, the dancing and that the, they all look the same. So I looked and, and I thought, it was a freedom dance and that we all look the same naked. Um, 
and then when he said it was of himself that that explained the images all being being the same but um i look deeper and um where he's put tape along uh, like to his arms that black tape simple but just to emphasize the parts of the body uh it's it's very very thoughtful i really did uh look look and enjoy it but um as regarding matisse i've i've learned that today because i um i wouldn't have thought of that as the person's work so that's what i took from it Thank you, Yvonne. I, I would recommend going and having a look at Matisse's piece because um, it, it, it is very similar in, in the way that Sam's done it. I'd recommend just mm -hmm. having a look online. Mm -hmm. Hello everyone, it, it's, it's fashion to be here. I, 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 some of you know this already, if you think, why, why am I looking a bit of a shambles? It's because I've got a broken wrist, so uh, it's not that I've just got out of bed. Uh, one thing that's coming through, and I haven't seen all the artists, but those who I have heard, how much this has been an enjoyable thing for them to do. And uh, you, you kind of imagine it would be anyway, um, if any artist had a chance to be involved. But in the lockdown, there was a strong sense of that just, just there. This was something that he thoroughly enjoyed doing. It made him laugh. It made his partner laugh. Now, uh, Francesca, last week as well, there was a, there was a strong sense of what, what does a dancer do? when you can't go out and dance and perform. So it might be a fluke of the, the lockdown circumstances, but there's also this underlying element that we've given people a little bit of freedom to do something. We've almost sort of plucked them away like all of us are, just sitting, staring in front of a computer screen. Uh, so for, 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 for him, it's, it was, that, that was really sweet to see the, 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 the sense that it just was a lovely thing to have a chance to do. Uh, as I say, it was daft, almost, belittles it and belittles the whole project. It didn't feel daft, but it had given him a laugh. Uh, he'd had fun. It had been something different. It responded quite quickly. So there's a lot of positives coming out of there. And, and, and as soon as I saw it, it did make me think of Francesca's because Francesca's dance was so precise. Uh, and the way she was able to maneuver herself, extraordinary, a bit like a contortionist at times, and in those outdoor localities. Now it sounded like he, hadn't, he clearly hadn't seen the video. He just had these clues uh, and, and yet it, it was a very neat but different response uh, presumably someone who's not a dancer so as a, as, as a leap it, it wasn't just a straight continuation it was a break with what Francesca did uh, but, but I, I love the way it, it kept him entertained and I thought that that had worked really well nice to see yeah I talked to Sam a bit after our interview and he said um was it us on purpose that we put a dancer before before him and because he's a very visual artist that's that's quite a good medium for him to respond to and that I don't think that was actually our, our purpose we, we just wanted to split different mediums up but um I'm, I'm very happy that that's happened because he, yeah it, it was a really nice transition between them. I was really struck by how in Francesca's video it's Francesca in different locations, repeating some of the dance moves in different locations. So there's kind of this theme of like repetition. The nature is repeated and certain dance moves are repeated. And she herself is repeated throughout the video collage. And with the with Sam's work, it's like he he is literally repeated in a dance. And with Francesca, although it felt quite singular, with uh, Sam's work, it feels almost like a folk dance, like a, like a really celebratory thing. Mm. So yeah, I was just kind of thinking about this thing of the artist repeating themselves and actually how I think that can be quite a creative thing. Mm. Go for it, Kim. Um, I found it really interesting, the fact that he'd, um, he'd you know, been inspired by Matisse and had stuck quite closely to the, mm. to the ideas that Matisse had, but he made it his own um, and you know that's something that I'm always banging on about because um, you know when I'm when I'm doing the painting classes and people are sitting there no, not knowing what to paint I very often give them paintings by famous people or photographs and things and and they seem to want to reproduce it exactly as it is and, and so this idea of 
being able to be inspired by someone else's work mm -hmm. and make it your own. Um, I think he did a fantastic job of that. I think the fact that, you know, um, for me, it was quite exciting because I, I, I don't know much about art history. I haven't studied art much, but I did do quite a lot of looking into art history during lockdown. That was one of the things I set myself to do. So as soon as it came up, I thought, I know this, I know this, you know. So I was really excited about that because, you know, before lockdown, I wouldn't have been able to say that was Matisse. Um, and um, what he what he managed to do was still create that wonderful movement that, you know, with he kept the simplicity because I think you could have spoilt it by making it more detailed. And so his lack of his sort of doing it quickly, um, having an idea, running with it, enjoying it just comes out in the whole piece. You just he feels happy. So it makes us feel happy. And I love artwork that, that produces these sorts of emotions. Um, but what was also interesting, it reminded me that um, during my sort of during lockdown and my studying of art history, this is where my memory uh, is completely. I, I just cannot remember the name of the artist, but there was a, a picture in the course that I was doing of um, based on Christina Rossetti's poem about uh, being called um, I Lock Myself Away or something like that, I'm getting all the words wrong, but there's a painting of a girl sort of, you know, lying like this and all these things in the background, she's just sort of looking wistfully and then all around the, the, the painting are lots of sort of symbols of things that represent this person and that are sort of, if you like, inspired by the poem. And this just reminded me of that. And I, I actually did quite a bit of work during lockdown planning my own lockdown painting of me in that similar pose and it's made me sort of come back to it and think you know maybe that wasn't such a naff idea after all <laughs> you know maybe I should should get on and do it because I, I I too I don't particularly like um painting myself but I do enjoy portraits and sometimes in lockdown yourself I, that I did do self-portraits during lockdown because that was all there was mm -hmm. um and uh yeah I, I I really really have enjoyed this this piece very much mm -hmm. And I guess that kind of answers Louise's uh, point of he, often to paint someone nude or naked is you have to find a willing model and Sam probably didn't have another willing model so mm -hmm. himself. <laughs> yeah. um, Louise, do you have your hand up? Yeah, um, because I um, I have done quite a lot of reading around art history and stuff like that and I, I'm, I'm, I think I've seen a Matisse exhibition in London as well in the last decade anyway and I, I seemed to recall that he turned to paper cuts because he was ill and he had to work in bed and that's what he could do so i think that has a nice resonate uh, resonation with the um with the lockdown and you know everything else that's going on the other thing is the um anthony gormley obviously the angel of the north you know most of his stuff is made of a cast of his body because he is available and that and um there was something else as well that linked up oh yeah i i um I had to start my swing ball routine because I wasn't allowed out of the house. And I had to make the decision that I was going to put my fat little body on film and put it out for public people to see and at risk of people looking at me and laughing and things like that. Because I realized that that was something that I could do and I could put the mathematical sequences into it and get the exercises and hopefully inspire other people who are not able to go out and about a lot. Although obviously, the immediate crisis of lockdown has gone, but um, I'm hoping that once I can get the films up on, which I've got stuck because my computer's ropey in that, um, uh, but once I can get the films on and edit the other ones that I haven't done, I'm hoping that it will be of use to people who are sort of fairly homebound generally, you know, so have a natural sort of isolation, not imposed by COVID. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, I think it has been really good in, for a lot of artists in that we've had to start thinking massively about how we do our work in other ways. Mm -hmm. So it all ties up together for me that. <laughs> and I guess I, I wanted to ask Erica because obviously you've already done the process of this and Sam talked about, um, I guess he's usually a oil, oil painter and so that takes a lot longer so changing his medium how did you how did you find that when you you did yours or what are your thoughts on on that aspect of the process of changing the materials mm -hmm. that you usually use um because i guess as a printmaker printmaking is often a very long process i know but it's difficult because see i don't i've got issues with the with the fact that uh 
would call the printmaker because I really see myself as an artist that uses print and I'm I can't be a master printer because I've been educated for it so I do have a lot of knowledge within printmaking but my artwork doesn't necessarily it's just print it always it almost always includes print because I see for example laser cutting as or laser engraving as a part of print or digital printing as part of print. But I think in the past 10 years, my work has been three dimensional. So, cause I'm trying to do this printmaking in the expanded field, a bit more installation based and stuff. What I think the difference was to me in terms of not materials, but the process and the method were very different you know just coming from an audio he mentions himself it's like usually I I work with visual things um, or a, a subject matter I, I research a subject matter and then I research the visual links that exist already and then I start sketching or photographing or um but never from, from listening. And I think today I wrote the text that I'm sending and I, and I wrote that. The most important part of this project for me was, first of all, collaboration, because I work on my own a lot. Mm. And taking from, from listening to someone, you know, and the way, you know, it was, was an audio that came to me and it was me only listening to it it was almost like a secret it was it's it is so personal as well and you can hear the mood you're trying to find out what it is and the, the description but you're also listening to the voice of someone you don't know mm. and to me that inspiration is quite powerful and personal mm. so yeah i think a lot of the artists have found the audio quite intimate experience to listen to. Does anyone else have any other thoughts or comments? All right, well, we'll listen to the audio um, and then we'll have a little bit more of a discussion after that and then we'll wrap up. Um, Hello, happy bank holiday. Um, so I have been working for the past week and the things that stood out for me from the audio that I received were particularly the discussion around or kind of the mention of the idea of ephemerality um, because I am a dancer and so I'm working with or trying <laughs> to work with movement at the minute um, and I think I'm the only one and it was interesting because Ephemerality is something you talk about a lot in terms of dance and performance because normally we normally view dance live most of the time and so it's in the uh, it's in the act of sort of constantly disappearing before us like we witness it and then it disappears and it will never happen exactly the same way again so it's an incredibly yeah ephemeral medium because it's it's constantly being created and constantly disappearing um, and that's part of this sort of audience experience and that is the main thing that has been lost during this pandemic um, for, you know, the majority of performance. And so just questions of kind of something that's such an innate part of the form, like what happens when you record something digitally? Um, I don't have answers to those questions, but just thinking about that and what does it mean when a medium that's usually sort of lost forever is recorded in a digital way? Um, yeah, sort of what does it become? And then the other thing that really stood out to me was the this idea of collaging, which obviously the sort of um, material connotations to that of like how we usually understand or think about collaging. So I've been thinking about what does that look like if you're doing sort of movement and film. And so I've been trying to film a lot of things and sort of splice different things together and 
think about the process of collaging but through like a completely different medium so that is what I've been experimenting with we'll we yet to find out if it will be successful or what does that even mean um but yeah those are the two main things that I have been working with and I've also been trying to work a lot outside and maybe bring in some of that element of um even though you're recording something so you're kind of making it more permanent than it would usually be um if you're recording in outside spaces the conditions that you're recording in are that you know you're recording them in that only in that um sort of way they'll never be exactly the same again they'll never be the exact same birds or breeze or sounds um or weather so yeah just playing with all of those ideas I hope that is um something helpful to use and have fun what are people's thoughts about how that related to Sam's work can you see the owls interesting how we've gone on to this idea of collage because we started off with much more regular painting yeah it's almost like one of those um what is it called where you you draw a part and then fold it over and give it to the next person and yeah. then the next part yeah Chinese whispers as well yeah consequences consequences that's the name you obviously picked up on the, 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 the collage idea and that Francesca was a dancer. About half of the, the, the audio was talking about things being quite ephemeral. Um, I'm not sure he necessarily picked up on that. It wasn't obvious. He didn't make a big play of that in his discussion, which is perfectly OK. On the other hand, he, he, he might never have photographed himself dancing naked around his living room other than the circumstances that prompted it. So it, 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 it might still have that ephemeral quality in there. Uh, which is which is interesting, the bits he, he did pick up, and he clearly got the collage. There's only a fleeting mention of the outsideness as well, uh, which is there in his painting. So the bits that clearly registered in his imagination. Yeah. I guess the, um, the, Francesca talked a bit about the ephemeral nature of dance and like how you would, the movements, can you record those or are they? So I guess that kind of relates to, to Sam's painting. Oh, collage. Mm. We've lost the sense of breath though, haven't we? That it's because it's like a, a 2D piece. Well, because, because um, for the first three or four artists, there was a strong sense of the breath. And obviously we can see the strand that's going through and they couldn't, but they did pick that up. But I, I think that's gone now from the, the strand of thinking. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I guess the little things are lost each time you pass a work on. Mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sort of half wondering whether we will come back to any of the ideas that were actually in the first one at all. Mm. Well, we've got two artists to go, we'll see. <laughs> um, I'm quite interested to see if this kind of, if humour starts to pick up, because I think I think Sam's the first artist to do like a really explicitly humorous piece mm -hmm. and it is like a spoof of Matisse that doesn't take away from the effort and all the skill involved in it I really appreciate a good artistic spoof but I'm really interested to see if the next two artists kind of take forward the humor or they pick up on other elements which maybe make it seem more serious mm -hmm. um as a disclaimer, I love both super serious art and humorous art. So I think to love both is really possible. And I'm really pleased that kind of both aspects have come up in this project. Because um, often artists are accused both of taking it too seriously or not having an impact on the world, which I kind of find quite funny, really, because it's a bit of a dichotomy. But yeah. Mm. I think it'd be really interesting if it did do that and it would ha have a sense of full circle if it did because it, you know like the first one was obviously really terrifying as we were you know thinking about as we were going into the pandemic and 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 the fear and the loss of life and things like that and mm. so if we end up with humour at the end that would be a lovely kind of wrapping up of it all mm. so mm. I kind of hope they do. Mm. Well on that note 
uh, next week, um, we have Tia Franco. Um, it's actually on a different time next week. So it's still Wednesday, but it's six to 7 p.m. in the evening. Um, it's the only one that's a different time, but it's the same link. So you can use the same link to come. Um, and Tia has done some quite sculptural work. That's um, what we know of her. I don't know what, or don't know what she's done for this project. We'll find out next week. Um, so it'd be great to see you, see you there. And then um, also to flag up our post view, um, is it the 9th of July, Gemma? No, the 9th of July, um, Gemma will be leading that. Do you, do you want to say a little bit about it? Um, yeah, it's the 9th of July. It is seven till nine with a nice break in the middle, so you're not totally zoomed out. Um, and we are going to be putting all the audio together and all the visual of the project and enjoying it as kind of one long thing and then discussing that. So it's going to be quite interesting, firstly, to see all the artists' reaction to that. Um, but also to see maybe in a bit more depth how the audio and the visual combine or don't and have a bit of a discussion about that. You say Friday the 9th? Yes. 7 till 9? Yes. Is that on Zoom? Different code, but it is on the source website. So next week, same code, but 6 or 7pm. And then the post view, 9th of July, different code. Thank you very much for coming, everyone, and uh, hopefully see you next week. Bye.